Hello and welcome by ASR channel. Today I'm gonna talk about my 10 most favorite oil painting supplies. And um, yeah, I thought it would be nice now to make a, uh, finally a tutorial on the nice uh, supplies because when you are painting for a while and you are practicing um, a lot, you're gonna understand your mediums and your uh, products uh, more and more. And you're also gonna discover the products that you like the most and why, uh, of course, and uh, which ones you don't uh, like as much. So therefore I uh, thought it would be nice to share with you and to uh, give you hopefully uh, some ideas you may uh, want to use for yourself. So let's start it because I have 10 to talk about. And um, yeah, this is the first one and it is the turpentine. It's just a, um, a regular uh, turpentine, nothing uh, special about it. It's just in the hardware store. Most of the times I buy this and I have the um, odorless free version. But I have to say, this uh, one still stings. I can nothing, say nothing fancy about it, it's just... But it, it isn't as horrible as the one uh, with um, the non odorless uh, ones. But uh, yeah, it's, it just uh, still smells. And um, if I use it in my cleaning pot, which I will show you in a minute, because it's one of the ten. But um, yeah, I just use it and put a lid right on it, because it still has some of uh, odor uh, to it. And it's also it is a toxic, so therefore you want to close that lid uh, as soon as you, you are done uh, with uh, cleaning your brushes. But this is uh, just the uh, simple one, nothing fancy about it. It don't cost a lot and it works uh, very well with my uh, paint and brushes and cleaning, those kinds. So that was uh, beat number 10. And now we go to the number 9. And first of all, it is the uh, tissue that I use to... Um, clean my brushes with if I have too many paint too many paint on it or I just uh, washed it with the uh, turpentine I'm gonna use this uh, to dry and it is the fiber tissue so not the uh, regular one I, I think in America the most uh, common one is the bounty I use those for my acrylic paints but uh, for my others I, I use this the fibered um, fiber uh, tissue and I think you can buy it where they also sell um, some supplies for um, if you want to fix your car. Most of the times they have this uh, kind of tissue as well because when you are um, working on cars or motorcycles or something like that, most of the times you have oil on your hands and you want to clean it as well. And um, our paints or oil paints um, work also well with this tissue. So therefore I use the fiber one. If you don't have the fiber of your don't like it, maybe the feel of it or something, you can also um, use a old t-shirt. So if you have a damaged t-shirt or something you don't like anymore, you can use that uh, t-shirt uh, as well. And also that's for the big parts, I also sometimes use that fiber and um, uh, to uh, clean up uh, bigger portions of my paint if I don't like them. Especially in the beginning I had a lot of bad layers and I wanted to um, get them off the canvas again, I also used it, uh, this fiber tissue. If I have, I don't do that as much anymore, but if I, uh, but it works obviously, but if I have, um, for example, some details in our day uh, for the hairs, for example, and they are a little too thick, I use a, um, I use a uh, Q-tip, that was the worst, I'm sorry, a Q-tip, and I can uh, easily remove some paint from the canvas very easily, and I don't have to use this fiber because it's uh, a little harder to control if you only uh, want to um, get rid of uh, a, a detail, who, uh, for example, like I said, a hair or a clump of hair is uh, what was a little bit uh, too thick, a, a Q-tip is very handy. And the number eight is my vernis, and I'm gonna show it up close. I have a tutorial on uh, where I do a comparison between with this brand between the gloss and the um, satin version. That was the word, satin version. Um, so if you wanna if you wanna see the difference between those two, uh, you wanna check this uh, tutorial. Um, but I like the the gloss one very very much, the second one as well, but I have to choose by far the gloss one. It, it brings the colors uh, up so much more and when you finish a painting, this is not finished yet, but when you finish a painting and you want to furnish it, you think you have everything in place, you are uh, happy with your colors. 
Well, then you apply this furnace and uh, there is a little uh, magic happening if you ask me because it uh, pops up, it makes those colors even richer than they already are and so therefore I like the furnace and the glass furnace. And I like to use this brand, it's from Gamblin as you uh, uh, just did see, but um, I just saw, I'm sorry, just saw. It's the Gamblin uh, brand and I like this very very much because you can apply it when the paint, the oil paint is dry to the touch. So you don't have to wait for weeks, for months or uh, even longer to let the paint dry, but it has to be dry to the touch. One um, very important note that if you are painting in very thick uh, clumps of paint with uh, a pellet knife for example, you may want to wait longer because it seals the paint not, not as um, much as the other furnaces. It, um, it still has some, um, uh, it still can move, it doesn't break, so therefore this is, uh, you can apply when the paint is dry to the touch. But if you have too many paint on, uh, on it, it's uh, maybe the uh, upper layer is uh, dry, but underneath it not. I'm not sure how to apply it in that case. So therefore, uh, because I always paint in a little of in uh, thin layers, I don't apply uh, a, a much paint on my canvas. If you do that, uh, please ch uh, check them. Uh, just uh, uh, write them an email or call them and uh, just be uh, safe. I don't want to encourage you then to use this too soon because it can ruin your painting. So that is a, uh, a part of the note. But yeah, this is the, the furnace I like to use. It's by far my most favorite one. It apply, it does apply very uh, easily. And I think I have a, a tutorial on that, how I uh, furnish my paintings, so how I uh, apply it. I will have a link pop up so you can check it as uh, well. So that was my number eight. Now we are gonna go to number seven and I have to look and that was my cleaning parts. I have everything as thought out here beside me on a table, so I have to uh, find them. But um, yeah, it, um, this is just a glass pot, a old pot. And um, I have uh, obviously a lid on it. Here I stall my uh, turpentine in. And you can see it, uh, it's been uh, used uh, very well. It has a completely different color. But um, I can use it um, quite long. And uh, so therefore I like that because it's uh, not um, as friendly for nature and that uh, kind of stuff. So that I want to use it as long as possible. But I found something and um, that was, I saw in one of uh, the tutorials of other artists that I followed. Apparently, as far as I could find, only in America there is a uh, nice uh, pot where you have a iron spiral in, uh, in, in a pot and you can use that with your turpentine. If I can find it, I uh, obviously will put all the links in the video description. So if you want to check it out, you don't know what I'm talking about, I will have a link uh, in the video description um, so you can check it out. I couldn't find this in Europe or in the Netherlands, so I made my own and I just uh, used, a, uh, like I said, a glass pot with a lid on it, of course, and I um, did have a little piece of iron mesh in it. They translated and it said iron mesh, so I hope uh, it did translate very well. I will show you it in a, in a picture how it looks uh, inside, because I, I, it do, uh, doesn't work for the, in front of the camera. But um, yeah, and it uh, helps to um, get your bristles um, open up a little bit when you are cleaning, when you are um, uh, having your brush, uh, brush in the turpentine, that iron mesh is going to help you to uh, let those bristles stand out a little bit more. So the paint inside of all those bristles is uh, going um, washing out very quickly. And that was something that I didn't uh, thought that it would be so nice because I Previously, before I uh, found this uh, very, very useful um, pot, I didn't have that iron mesh inside and I just uh, uh, stored it and I did everything and the paint wouldn't get out very easily and it took me quite some time sometimes to um, cleaning my brushes very well. So I did mess up quite some brushes because I didn't have the right supplies. And it's very easy to make, just a uh, iron mess, put it in here and the turpentine in it and uh, like I said, I, uh, yeah, you saw it on a, on a photo, you, that iron uh, mess has to be in the turpentine a little bit so you can easily uh, put your brush um, uh, in it and it will uh, clean up uh, very easily. So that was my uh, number seven. 
So now we're going to uh, number six of my favorite supplies, and that is the soap. <coughs> Sorry, that is the soap. So uh, first, of course, we're going to clean it with turpentine in the cleaning pot you saw before. But um, sometimes in between, when I'm working quite for a long time on a painting, I want to uh, also clean my brushes with soap because they need it um, very more often than the brushes that I use with my acrylic paints. But all the time, always, when I finish a painting, I will uh, wash all my brushes that I used for the painting with oil paints with a soap. And I'm using the Masters. It's a brush cleaner. It's very, um, not a hard name. <coughs> I'm sorry. But um, yeah, I will uh, put a link as well uh, of this project in the video description. And I really, really like it. Because uh, when I didn't clean out my brushes um, as I should have, and they are a little bit damaged, this one can help you. Just put a brush uh, in the soap and let it uh, sit overnight, then clean it the other day with uh, warm water and you should be fine. It uh, did save me quite some brushes that way, <laughs> that way because I apparently don't clean my brushes as uh, always as they should be uh, cleaned. But uh, this is uh, very, very helpful. So the number five, that are the uh, actual brushes. I grabbed just a few of them. I have a lot of brushes, with different brushes, but I'm gonna show you a few that I like to use very often. And most of them are very, no, no, I think all of them are very cheap. I don't use uh, very expensive brushes. Like I said before, uh, my cleaning process is not always the best. And also, I don't um, find much difference if I'm using a uh, cheap brush or a very expensive brush. So therefore I like to use the cheap brushes. And a, a very must-have is a liner brush. If you want to have a good control over painting on uh, painting in details, you want to have some liner brushes. And I like the liner brushes who are uh, having uh, the longer bristles because they hold more paint. And also they have to be uh, quite stiff because most of the liner brushes that I find are quite, um, those bristles aren't stiff, uh, near as stiff as these guys. And what uh, happens is that if you apply it on your canvas with your paint, those bristles go all different directions. You don't want that, because you want to have control over your bristles and therefore you have to have uh, the more stiffer ones. And it made all the difference for me. Also I have another cheap brush. I think it's the Eteclon Bristol Cheap One brush. I also have the Low Cornell Fur brushes. They have a little bit of different shape. It looks like a, um, a filbert, but it has some holes in between. So you have uh, you can make multiple lines with one brush stroke. That is the um, fur brush or uh, rake brush can use, uh, can call them. And I also always have these stiffer, stiffer uh, brushes, just the very cheap ones. You find them in a lot of different stores. And I use only those to um, get rid of my brush stroke. So when I apply some paint and you see the those harsh lines with a, uh, because of the, the brushes, I'm just gonna use those and uh, for the edges. So if I for example, painted in this light and I have a lot of stripes and I want to get uh, rid of that, I uh, want to make a nice transition, so I'm going to uh, want to get rid of those harsh lines. I'm going to use this brush and go around it and for getting the lines in between in this section, I am using a mop brush. I have actually two of them. Well, one is a, a makeup brush and one is the actual mop brush. And I'm gonna use those mop brush and barely let those bristles touch my canvas. And you're gonna move it in all kind of different directions over that uh, section where you want to lose your brush strokes and this one uh, will get rid of those. But I hold it uh, something like this and I'm gonna move this all around. And like I said, it's very important to let those bristles barely touch your canvas. I cannot stress that enough. If you don't do it, it doesn't work. But why I do have makeup brushes? And to be honest, uh, when I started painting, a friend of mine suggested to use makeup brushes because I had a very hard time finding these. And if I did find them, they were very expensive. 
I like, don't like expensive stuff, so I thought, uh, well, she came up uh, with the idea for uh, makeup brushes. And in all, I am a very big fan of uh, Lisa from Lockery Fine Art. She uses also uh, these makeup brushes, and I have to say, they work very well. And to be honest, I think she is using still these ones of the Royal Thoughts for her oil paints, but I don't, I'm not sure, so check her video, videos out, her tutorials out if you want to be sure. I did stop working with these guys. These uh, are from Royal uh, Soft Grip, but they shed like crazy. Oh my god, it was so hard and so annoying when I used these because I had a lot of hairs on the canvas and I had to get them out again and then rework it again. I know the oil paint stays wet for quite a long time, so you have the time to get all those hairs out, but way too annoying for me. So I started uses, uh, using also makeup brushes, same technique, basically the same, with uh, oil paints and it works very well. And these guys don't shed, are not, in, not as close as much as these guys, so therefore I switched to makeup brushes completely, for my acrylic paints, for my oil paints. And just, I'm holding them like this because you want to have a loose hand when you're applying this technique. If you're not completely sure what I meant by this, please let me know because I can make a tutorial and uh, show it you in action. So if you're not sure, but I think I have covered it, but if you don't, uh, leave me a uh, message in the comment section and I will get to it as soon as possible. So that was my number five and now we have number four of course. So I have to grab something because I'm going to show you a uh, palette to be, a, uh, because um, uh, this had the same palette that I'm going to show you, uh, but I broke the glass. This is just a, a simple frame, and there's some picture in it, uh, still in it, because I did get it uh, from a uh, second-hand shop. But um, yeah, the picture will get uh, away, uh, I will throw that, uh, throw that out. <laughs> <coughs> but I'm going to use the glass, and also the back, uh, because I want to have this glass uh, on this uh, cotton. and. Um, because it's um, very uh, stable that wise but I'm gonna get rid of the, ca uh, the picture because it's a nice picture but uh, it's very distracting when you are applying paint and you are focused on the painting I don't uh, want to have any distractions there so I'm gonna uh, get rid of that but I use the glass I'm gonna put my paint on it and if the paint is dry I just use a simple glass scraper I think you call it to get rid of the paint and I can get it off very easily like this and this works really well I uh, used uh, some uh, throwaway um, uh, plastic ones and that kind of stuff I didn't like that and I think this is more official uh, uh, long term because you, because you can use it uh, normally over and over again I did have one but I did manage to break the glass like I said I just pushed uh, way too hard and it wasn't stable on my table so uh, yeah, I broke the glass. So I had a new, uh, I had a new, uh, uh, buy a new one. But this is my new one, and I will uh, have it installed uh, very soon, so I can uh, work uh, on my painting again. So that's the palette. Uh, now we have number three, and number three is the paint. And I struggled quite a lot over the years to find my my paint, the paint that I like the most, because there are quite a different uh, good oil paint brands, if you ask me. But um, I couldn't find uh, the one that suited me the most. And first of all, I thought it uh, uh, was because I didn't have that much experience. Part of it, um, part of that did. But now I have more experience. Now I know, and now I know how to compare them. How to um, um, they have a certain feel to uh, them because uh, of the thickness of how thin those paints are. And um, I uh, came across the Gamblin, Gamblin paints. I'll show it in the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Gamblin paints. And these paints are kind of buttery. I don't know how to explain it, but I am really, really... I was so excited to start uh, when I started uh, using this one. Before I used some Winter and Newton st uh, student quality. Good paints, but it was something... Um, at them that I didn't like 
And I have to say, those paints didn't work well with my furnace. The furnace didn't stick to those paints. With this paint, it works perfectly. So, uh, therefore, I stick with the Gamblin paint. Like I said, it has a sort of buttery feel to it. But uh, I, I like it. I really, really like it. I think they, they have beautiful colors. And uh, so, therefore, I stick with the Gamblin. But I only have uh, some paint left, and that was the Rembrandt paints. All uh, professional quality. And um, this is my second to go. If you uh, don't have the Gamblin or you cannot buy it in your country for some reason, uh, the Rembrandt is also a fantastic paint. So um, that is my second choice. My first one is the Gamblin, my second choice is uh, the Rembrandt paints. So that was uh, the painter number three. Now we go to the number uh, two, and that is um, my liquid. The liquid that I like to use for my paints it is uh, from uh, Winter Newton. It's the liquid original, and I also have the liquid detail. The liquid original, this one, uh, I use to um, layer in my paints, but it's a bit thicker than the details, and I thought it didn't it wouldn't make that much a difference the the liquid detail in comparison uh, with the regular liquid but it does it's just uh, way thinner and you can see it in the bottle how it moves it's almost like water and it works so well when you're uh, painting in details and not even only for a layering but i'm using it also when i apply hairs and uh, to get those nice thin thin hairs this is wonderful stuff i uh have it uh, used for a, uh, my last three portraits, I think. I don't have it as long, but I really, really recommend it. It's uh, really wonderful. And yes, this bottle does look a little bit strange because I did manage to um, uh, break uh, the lid. So therefore I have this uh, plastic uh, to, uh, around it with, to, to cover it and to don't uh, to try to get a void get uh, too much air in it but apparently I did a bad job because it's drying up in a bottle but I have something uh, some um, left over here that works really well so I am uh, gonna use that but uh, then I'm going to buy a little smaller uh, containers because I uh, found them easier to use I thought I would uh, save up and uh, uh, buy a bigger a bigger one because I use it quite a lot but um, I always have uh, difficulties with those uh, lids because there is some liquid in between the lid and the bottle and uh, or the container and it uh, dries up and I cannot uh, get the lid off so I had to uh, get a hole in the lid to get it out a whole story there but uh, yeah I did manage to break uh, too many stuff now it's uh, drying up so I have to use it uh, while I can and then I'm gonna use I'm gonna buy some uh, other uh, new um, bottles and I'm gonna use the smaller ones so that was my uh, second one. So now we have only one left. I made a top 10. There are a few more supplies, but I think those not, are not so important as these 10. 10. So um, yeah, we have one left and that's the canvas, obviously. We don't uh, did, uh, didn't talk about the canvases yet. And I like to use the cotton versions and also the Belgian linen. I used some different linen I didn't like. I really like the Belgian linen. Uh, but um, in general I just like smooth canvases and to be honest uh, I cannot find a smooth canvas uh, or smooth enough for my portraits especially the cotton ones because uh, apparently we don't have those in Europe or I cannot find them so if you live in Europe and you have a very smooth canvas uh, which um, has a good uh, is a from a good quality please let me know because I'm very curious to uh, find something and to try them out so if you would go through the bar and uh, leave a comment uh, um, in the comment section I re would really appreciate it because I can uh, then check them out but as long as I have these these are a um, middle structure so they have don't have a lot of structure on the canvas but uh, too much for me so therefore I like to use and this is uh, probably the number 11th of my uh, favorite uh, uh, supplies because this is also uh, a supply but I use it on the canvas it's a primer it's not a gesso it's a primer I don't know the uh, much difference between a gesso and a primer I don't think there are a lot of difference but um, in my experience this one applies a little bit easier on the canvas it is drying up 
a little slower than the, the most gessos that I have. So I uh, like this uh, uh, more and it, it sticks nicer to the canvas. It's just uh, for me, it's personal preference of course, but I found it uh, sticking uh, um, smoother to the canvas than a gesso. A gesso that I used, I had uh, sev several brands that I did uh, try out, but it felt a little bit more ch chalky and uh, rougher. So I uh, tried a primer and I really like it. It's from Las Caux. I don't know how to pronounce that brand, but here it is. And like I said uh, earlier on, I will have some links in my video description. But I apply uh, most of the time two layers of primer and I have the most nice, smoothest canvas to use. So therefore, if I don't can find the uh, canvas who are already smooth enough, I just stick with these uh, canvases and use the primer on them and uh, problem solved. But it takes me a little uh, longer to start actual paint because I have first have to prime my canvases. If I can avoid that, I like it because I want to save time. If I can avoid it, well, yeah, it's not a big of a hustle to uh, get through to, before painting. But yeah, most of the times, maybe you uh, recognize that if you have a, a wonderful idea to paint, you want to try uh, to start off right away. I have that same problem. but. Like I said, it's not uh, a major problem. And I did forget to, uh, to mention the brand. It's uh, from uh, Gerst Acker. It's a company from Germany, which I really like. I found them very helpful if I have issues. They have a lot of products, and so I buy a lot of from them. And I have the Studio 2 uh, canvases. It's uh, a studio brand, but it's a very nice one. And it, uh, for me, it doesn't uh, get out of shape. And uh, also with the acrylic paints, I, I like to use a lot of water on it. I like to use a lot of liquid with my oils. I had never, never, ever had a one single problem with those canvases. So uh, I just want to stick with these. Uh, of I had, I have to find a smoother one. But uh, yeah, these ones work very well. And like I said, they also have the uh, Belgian linen versions, but I uh, use both the Belgian and the cotton versions. So, that was uh, the last one, that was my number one. I hope uh, you found this tutorial uh, helpful. For now, thank you for watching, and also thank you for the new subscribers, and all, of course, of all the uh, subscribers who were already here. But uh, after my uh, last tutorial about that um, portrait that I did of the Scottish boy, I had uh, quite some, uh, a lot of new subscribers. And I'm a small channel, so uh, for me, it was a lot. Maybe in comparison to another channel, it's not that much doesn't matter, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for being here, and I hope I will make the tutorials that you like, and uh, if I don't, or uh, not completely, please let me know, because uh, I like to change it and to try to make it even better than I uh, hopefully do now. So uh, don't um, hesitate, leave a comment in the section below. Like I said, for now, thank you for watching and thank you for following me, and if you like, you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and my own website, and if you watch this tutorial and you didn't already subscribe to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. And like I said, um, I hope to bring you good content that will uh, fit you or um, get you started to paint or whatever. But uh, I like to uh, be helpful where I can. So therefore, uh, thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching this, this tutorial. And I hope to see you at one of my next tutorials. Bye bye! Or the... Or, uh, or yeah, our, uh, our romantic uh, free version, but the Odalus uh, uh, free version. Uh